Uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and uh, thank you for joining me again today. Um, I'm up on my favorite website uh, for technology news, and it's uh, called ARS Technica. I've been following them for years, and I'm on out in the tech section here. And there's an article that caught my eye up there that I wanted to share with you, um, and it's uh, it says, despite clear warnings, Europe is out of IP addresses again. Uh, last year, RIPE ran out of new IPs, but this week, the used ones are gone, too. This article comes to us from uh, Jim Salter, uh, November 26, uh, 2019. Uh, so let's get into it. Here's a graph uh, of IPv4 waiting list graph, basically, that shows from November 24th forward, um, the IPv4 addresses have been exhausted. And here's a waiting list for new assignments. So let's get into the article. Uh, Monday afternoon, RIPE, or the Regional Internet Registry for Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Central Asia, announced that it is out of IPv4 addresses. What this means is that the organization has handed out its last available slash 22, that's the CIDR notation, C-I-D-R, uh, 1,022 addresses, net block. If you need European public IP addresses of your very own, you must get on a waiting list and hope for some other company to die on the vine or relinquish its address space when it does. There are some caveats to RIPE's used IPv4 address car lot, though. To get on the waiting list, you must never have received any subnet from RIPE in the past, and you may only receive a single slash 24 subnet. That gets you 256 total IPv4 addresses, three of which are used just to set up the whole thing, network, broadcast, and gateway. And for those of us who are uh, network savvy, you, you know that that's absolutely true. So if you plan to have more than 253 devices connected, you're going to need to get thrifty and figure out how many of them can be put behind NAT, which is Network Address Translation. That's uh, private IP addressing uh, on a local uh, area network. RIPE clearly hopes that its announcement will spur IPv6 address adoption, but that seems unlikely. End users remain largely unaffected by IP address exhaustion. They can still connect to their IP, ISP, get the temporary use of one of the ISP's IP addresses, and browse cat pictures with uh, wild abandon. For the most part, small businesses are similarly unaffected, just like end users. They typically lease their IP addresses from a local ISP and fully expect a need to relinquish those IP addresses when, they, when and if they change internet providers. Real pressure, uh, the real pressure address exhaustion puts is largely on the startup internet to start uh, or service providers. In order to offer internet uh, access to 10,000 people, you will generally need a net block of 10,000 IP addresses to hand out to them, each one, of course, needing a unique address. Without that net block, you don't have much chance of becoming an internet service provider. And if you already are a large ISP, Perhaps you're a bit cynical about anything that makes it easier for competition to creep in. Of course, ISP in this case doesn't just mean last mile carriers such as Spectrum, AT&T, or British Telecom. Cloud providers such as Azure uh, or Azure, Digital Ocean, and Linode are also internet service providers and they cannot function without large blocks of IP addresses to lease to their customers. The lack of new IP addresses to allocate means a significantly raised barrier to entry for new players in either local or cloud ISP markets, and the likelihood of stagnation and protectionism in the parts of those who already got theirs. The only way to avoid this otherwise inevitable slide toward an IP address-based water empire is to leave IPv4's limitation behind entirely and migrate to IPv6. There are only 4.2 billion IPv4 addresses possible. That's uh, 2 to the 32nd power minus 2, by the way. But the IPv6 space consists of 340 
Undecillion. That's uh, the 38 zeros, by the way, guys. Individual addresses. Um, unfortunately, the very organizations in the best places to drive IPv6 adoption, large internet service providers, have arguably the least motivation to do so. Okay, so this, um, here's another graph, by the way. Um, it's IPv6 adoption, uh, and it's showing all the way through January of 2019. I mean, it is happening, but look, it's only 30%. Um, you know, not a lot of uh, desire here to jump on the IPv6 wagon. Uh, let's finish this art article up here. Uh, right now, many users have IPv6 addresses made available to them by their ISPs, but they can't generally get much use out of them. Google's IPv6 adoption chart above shows clearly or shows nearly one in three Google users having an IPv6 address available to them. Uh, however, those users aren't really using those IPv6 addresses for much. There tend to be peering problems in IPv6 address space, and relatively few websites even have quadruple A IPv6 host record defined. And that's the host record for your DNS, uh, which is IPv6. All right, so this clearly uh, is an article from ARS Technical showing that you know Europe is in trouble obviously, and uh, it certainly is, uh, and to be shortly followed by the rest of the world. Not quite sure what our situation is here in the United States, but, um, you know, with my particular ISP, for instance, I use IPv6. They support IPv IPv6, and uh, my router, of course, supports IPv6 as well, and so I have both turned on. Um, of course, I do use NAT because I have a local area network, uh, but um, I don't turn IPv6 off. Um, uh, yeah, I have a master's degree in IT, so I maybe I understand IPv6 a little better than most folks. Um, I did do my master's thesis in IPNG, next generation IPv6. So I do have a clearer understanding of the advantages of using IPv6. Um, and it's more than just uh, an expanded address space. And uh, when I say expanded, I mean vastly expanded. But um, because you have, with IPv6, you also have encryption capability that's beyond IPv4. And, uh, and so there are other advantages to be taken uh, when looking at IPv6 that people aren't aware of. Um, most ISPs today do offer IPv6, whether individuals who... Um, who have them as an ISP are using those IPv6. I think that if I had to guess, most folks that are running Windows 10, for instance, I'm running Windows 10 Pro along with Linux on my home uh, devices, but I would imagine most people that are running uh, Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro probably go in and turn IPv6 off. Um, and that's not a good thing because uh, what that's saying is I don't care to learn IPv6. Uh, I don't want to know about it. I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, at some point, guys, you're going to have to wrap your head around it. That's all there is to it. Because we're running out of IPv4 addresses. And as you see in this article, Europe has run out. And and, and only that, folks that are startups, uh, for instance, or have lost their IPv6 uh, addresses, or four addresses, rather, um, they are on a waiting list now to get those back. And uh, they may not get them back which means companies may not be able to survive uh, or they'll, they're, they'll need to turn to NAT uh, internally and uh, work out some solution that way. So this is a clear warning, a clear message that, you know, we need to, um, we need to start looking at IPv6 now. We should have been looking at it years ago and time is, uh, the time has come and soon the time will be gone. People are going to be left in the dust. So, Take this article for what it's worth. Uh, despite clear warnings, Europe is out of IP addresses again. And all right, so this has been uh, Data Pioneer. And uh, if you like this article, go ahead and uh, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And when you do, hit that bell on the right-hand side and click all to get alerted every time I upload a video. And so this has been Data Pioneer with Linux Unix Tech Channel. Uh, have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.